Hello, and welcome to episode five of uh, Plots in Darkenhaven. This is our Gen Con episode, so uh, it is pre-recorded. So th the, the weird thing about this episode is it is actually being recorded before we even launch Plots in, Do Plots in Darkenhaven. So we're, we're guessing at the continuity. We'll figure that out. And then I'll have to, as we run games later, uh, we'll have to make sure that it matches up with this episode, which is actually the first one we're recording. And uh, we have our guest, James, who is going to be playing uh, Valinri. And what we're going to do real quick, since this is an episodic show uh, and characters are going to come and go on this episodic show, what we want to do is give everybody a chance to um, talk a little bit about their character. Now, we don't want to spend the first 30 minutes talking about characters, so I have a formula here. It's going to be basically the um, is a with... Who is a with who? Meaning that I'll give you an example. Uh, Joss Quicked Finger is a halfling carpenter with a newborn baby who lives across the street from the the uh, custodians of the condemned. So that's that's all we really want to do. We'll go around. Give me a is a with who statement about your character so that we can get on with this. All right, so we're gonna actually wait for James to be last. So Matt, go ahead. Uh, I'm playing Sigismund, who is a paladin uh, with a dead friend who is a magistrate and has, has given him a quest to help run this place and find some people. All right, Tim. Um, I play Isa Morai, a creepy, pawn shop owner, um, basically a cross between Ratcliffe from uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show and the Shame Wizard from Big Mouth. All right, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I play in Salvador Annalisa, who is quite um, a prodigy in his field and uh, is a, an Ethereum mage of sorts here to continue solving any cases that come about as part of a promise to a magistrate and last but not least james i am playing valenry of the night shadow who is a skundruz slowlock fusilier uh, specifically a pistolier uh up here um valenry is <sighs> He's got a bit of a checkered past um, and a checkered present. Um, and this is part of his less checkered present uh, in that he has a mission for an object that he's trying to find. Um, and he may or may not be a hired gun in his other life. All right. So uh, we're going to start here with uh, Valenry, who uh, has just got off a ship in the gloom port which is the port beneath Darkenhaven. Um, and you, you kind of know that this object that you're looking for, you've, been, you've heard rumors as you've traveled uh, that it might be in Darkenhaven. Um, your, your memories aren't really there. You, don't, you, you know of this object, but your, your memories of previous life, and we'll get into how Skundrews have previous lives and stuff as we go through this. Uh, that'll you know, little, don't want to spoil it for now, <laughs> um, but you have this. Um, you, you know that it, it it's probably in Darkenhaven. Now, a sailor uh, on the ship told you when you get to Darkenhaven, um, you might find uh, this condemned building that is next to Flax and Wagon Alley. And when you go when you get to that building, there are some people there that might be able to help you. They they kind of help people out and help people uh, solve problems in Darkenhaven. And um, so you think, well, I don't have any other leads. And you make your way to the, the part of the city known, of, known as Boogerton. Uh, and it is a, a smellier part of the city, a, a more uh, not, as, not as wealthy part of the city. Um, and you find this building and sure enough, it has, it has a sign on it that says condemned. Uh, but you see uh, a lantern in the window and it, you know that there are people in there. So um, we'll start from there. What do you do? Okay. Uh, I'm going to walk up to the door. 
Let's uh, give it a quick knock. All right, Sigismund and uh, and Savinor, you're you're inside the living room, just uh, kind of having a chat uh, or reading or whatever you do in 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 the living room of the condemned building, and you hear a knock at the door. In, in Savinor, wasn't it crazy what we did last week? My goodness, I, I surely hope we don't have to do that again. Um, but there's someone knocking at the door. I will get it. Seven or you, you, you stay seated. I've got this one. All right. And I'll keep reading my book that's in front of my face. He was just going to read his book anyway. I know he was. And I'll go over and, uh, and open the door. Hello. Good day. I'm told that you may be able to assist me. I, we do that sort of thing. It kind of depends on what you've got going on, but we can do our best. Uh, come on in and uh, meet in Savinor, and we'll discuss this further, exactly what your needs are. It's a bit run down, this place, isn't it? It's run down, homey, you know. I mean, also, that's not a great way to start out the new business relationship. Beauty right. is in the eye of the beholder. What is, seems to be your problem exactly? And his eyes never leave the book that he's looking at. I am looking for, it's difficult to say, it is an object, I, right. this is a little tricky, I do not recall much about it, um, and he's, now that he's inside, away from the smell a bit, he's going to pull down his um, bandana, uh, and you'll see quite an obviously Skundru's visage. There is an object that I recall from my past that I fear may be dangerous in the wrong hands, but is also something that I feel may be of benefit to me to own. Um, on seeing him pull down his his mask there and seeing that he's a scundrews, there's a small part of... of Sigismund that flashes back to his his previous life and his hand goes for his sword, but then he kind of like reaches down and, and starts like just absentmindedly rubbing the hem of his, his jacket and calms down. Um, all right, so you have something that is dangerous if it got into the wrong hands. Um, let's start with introductions. How does that sound? Yes? Yeah, I suppose it would be All necessary. Right. Well, I am Sigismund, and this is in Savinor, and um, we take care of problems if they are not on too grand of a scale. So what we need to figure out first in Savinor, I think this is usually our standard protocol, if the thing that, gets, that you are missing goes into the wrong hands, will someone die? Will many someones die? Or will all someones die? Again, I am sorry that... I am sorry that I cannot give you more information. As I say, my memories are fuzzy, to say the least. Um, All right, so... I um, am... Go ahead. I I am Valenry, by the way. Um, So, What do you uh, know of Fusils? Never mind. (laughs) You notice that he's... He's uh, he's also carrying um, a, a fusel, and his you you know that this is also what Stamond uh, uses quite frequently. Uh, of course, Stamond is not here right now, but um, you, you do recognize this, and you have seen fusels uh, being used, um, and you you know that they are magically imbued uh, weapons that that shoot rays of of stuff. And, and do destructive things. So um, you do know that. Trouble is what I know of them. Uh, in Savinor, how about yourself? Well, actually, we know quite a bit about fusils and the magic they carry and the power they wield. But what I would like to know is, and he looks up and finally sees who he's talking to and he adjusts his glasses. Well, aren't you rather interesting Please don't study our clients again in Savinor. This is not the time. What if you do not study how you learn, Sigismund? Because it's rude. Like I mean, I understand it is rude. 
Desire. There are not many of us around. Like, is it However, rude or just I... educational? <laughs> it's it's a it's a bit rude. I do agree um, that it is rude, however. Yeah. Let's maybe maybe after we get to know each other, we do a little bit of a favor for him, then you can ask some questions, but Indeed. maybe not as soon as we meet them. Maybe your scientific inquiries we start making after the mission. Yes? Perhaps well, as a part of payment for your services. Possibly. I, 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 I probably can do that. But here's the thing about um, the thing that we're about to get into. So you said you lost it. I uh, don't know where it is. Don't exactly know what it is. And the details Indeed. are quite um, vague, I would say. Yes. Indeed. The... If you are familiar with fusels, you will likely know that at the heart of each is what is known as a core, a flowstone core. This is the store of magic, I suppose, that powers them. There is a core that has been difficult to find detail on, yet I know that I have encountered it before. I believe it is referenced as something called the Sanguine Touch. And now for a core of one of these weapons to have borne a name is interesting in its own right. Does that name mean anything to... I, I don't think either of you have heard of this, but you, you do think that there might be somebody... Uh, a dealer in these antiquities uh, that might know uh, more about uh, some fusel core or a an ancient fusel stored somewhere that might hold this core called the Sanguine Touch? So, I mean, we could always go ask Tim. Right, no, that's not the name I needed. That's his real Etza. name. You <laughs> <laughs> can always go ask Etza. Etza knows name. about Etza knows about the 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 the, the guns, the flows, fusils, um, more than we do. Um, I mean, in Savanor, you tend to study magic without flowstone cores, and I don't really like magic that much. So um, maybe we go ask him. You're, are you saying that we are to seek the services of... <sighs> he's a it's... purveyor of goods of questionable origin. He's a purveyor of pilferings. All he does is steal objects. I do not trust him or his kind. I understand in Savanor, but it sounds like maybe this object has been stolen or lost. And who else would know better where it might be? than someone who deals in that sort of thing. So you're saying we should go see the thief because that is probably who has it. I'm saying, do you have a better option? Unfortunately, at the moment, I do not have a better option. So and it's uh, Morai <laughs> or Moran, as I should call him. I suppose we'll have to sully the rest of our day with his presence. Well, then we're in agreement. Um, I hope that that is okay with you that we involve someone else. But at this point, the locating of, of said artifact will require that we branch out for some new sources of information, since there I seems to be little. understand this, yes. Okay. Might I uh, inquire as to uh, recompense for your services? Four what million gold. I think you may be joking <laughs> with me there. I actually believe he's quite accurate. Four million gold. <laughs> Four seems million proper, gold. Seems the fair. Proper payment for the sanguine touch. It's a special rate. No, I don't. I don't know. You, I tell you what. We the way we usually do these things is we give you a hand, and then depending, we kind of have to figure expenses and how many people we have to deal with. It kind of depends on exactly what the adventure entails in the assignment. That I would is... hate to tell you it would be you know, a thousand gold, and then we get there and he's just got it in the back of his shop, you know. That is a pragmatic approach. I uh, appreciate that entirely. Does that sound fair to you in Savanor? I mean, possibly, if I have to go according to these rules, I suppose it would be fine. I am losing I... most of my day with reading and I have to deal with Etza. 
I tell you what, Insevenor, if it will make you feel better, you can make a spreadsheet of our adventure, of our costs. And like, I know you like that kind of thing. Would that make it better? If you can draw a little graph and actually that would make it better. Yes, I will make a see? Short and a graph. And everybody well wins. She's on this. Um, yes. I will get to it right away. I am curious. What is this spreadsheet you speak of? Why would you spread a sheet? Well, it's a it's a type of graph. It's a type of uh, documency that he practices, where he um, he makes a bunch of numbers and, and pictures that represent data, and then he tries to explain them to me, and I don't get it, but it makes him feel better. It is part of my own filing <sighs> system. You see, I've quite invented it, and it's quite efficient, actually. Um, once we I feel like his explanations finished, probably make as much sense as yours does to me right now. You have told us that you, you have lost a thing that you don't know where it is. You don't know what yes. it does. So maybe bear with us a little bit on the finer points of oh, how I, we I, work. I, I do not doubt that it is a, a efficient for you. We'll I'm all just get there curious to see it in action. All right. Uh, let, let's go see it. Then. Yes? yes? All right. Let's so go you, see it, sir. You all make your way to Giddings Way and go to uh, Grindel's Pawn Shop, um, where 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 Etza is uh, has, has found his way to be part owner. Um, you don't know what he has over Grindel, um, but he, uh, he he's somehow become very involved in this business. So let me get the three of you put on the map here. Oh, no, that's two Sigismunds. That's two Sigismunds. <laughs> we, we need a Valenry in there. All right, there we go. Um, so you show up to Grindel's Pawn Shop um, and, and, of course, make your way inside. We're not And it is late. It is late afternoon at this point. Um, yeah, Corey, you got to move us as players there as well. So oh, that, how do I do that? Uh, uh, activate. Uh, Yes, there, there we go. go. Yeah, <laughs> activate. There we go. Activate. Getting used to Forge. Uh, this is only the fifth time I've used it. Yes. Okay, it's the first time I've used it, but it's episode five. So chronologically, for those viewing, it'll be the fifth time I've used it. Um, all right. So you you show up at, at uh, Grendel's Pawn Shop, uh, and you you see Etza kind of thumbing through some stuff on a shelf, uh, and you see Grendel. As, as you come in and he, he looks at you, he looks over at Etza. You can see the resolve in his face that, okay, well, you're not here to buy anything um, and that you're probably going to be talking to Etza. So he, he kind of just makes his way over and starts, uh, you know, he doesn't even greet you. He just kind of walks over and starts grumbling. Um, actually, you know. actually, Corey, I am going to just like grab some little knickknacks um, something that's kind of cool and shiny and and give him leave a couple of coins on the counter uh, just so that we're not rude and we do a little business with him probably make him tolerate us a little better all right Grindel walks back over and he he's smiling and he he says oh this is much too much this is much too much here that's and he okay. tries to give you half of it back oh thank you oh. no 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 Grindel you keep it we appreciate you letting us talk to it so when we need to and um, the use of your facility, so just keep it as a as a thank you. Oh, okay. Well, don't don't smash that. That's that's not. Uh, I won't. It, I won't. Uh, what is it? By the way, I just like it because it's cool. It it, it's, it looks like um it looks like a little ornament that you might ha hang from something, and it has oh. like a little teardrop shape. Yes. Um, and and as you shake it, there's the, there might be something inside, some kind of liquid inside. Ooh. All right. Well, I'll examine that later when we're when we're not. Busy. I'll just kind of safely tuck it in a in a safe pocket. All right. Um, all right. Good. Good morning, Etta. How are you? Uh, hello. How are you, uh, gentlemen, this afternoon? We were better before entering your presence, but seeing as how this is where our day leads us, Sigismund. Uh, sorry about that, Etza. He's just a little grumpy. Uh, he has, but he's making a spreadsheet. It'll be, he'll be, he'll feel better soon. Yes, you uh, will not be involved in my spreadsheet, Etza. Just in case you were wondering, Etza has a, a, a creepy smile on his face. Um, but we we came uh, looking for some information. It's on the rare artifact that has gone missing. 
Um, perhaps oh. you can explain, and I'll gesture to our new friend. Uh, greetings, is it Etza? Uh, yes, Etza Morai. At your Etza Morai. Uh, I understand that these gentlemen have had dealings with you, um, yes. and that you may be of assistance. <sighs> Are you familiar with fusils? Certainly. Um, I am I, uh, an officer of some repute. Um, and I spe- spe- my speciality, you could say, is uh, various forms of firearms and different objects therein. Intriguing. Um, I'm going to pull mine out just lightly, sort of hold it out in my hands. You know that there is a fusil core uh, in the core of each weapon. <laughs> of course. I, in my... He seems sort of reluctant to mention it, but in one of my previous lives, um, I came across, I believe... I am unsure if it is a fusil or a core itself. Um, all I really know is that it was something called the Sanguine Touch. You see a, a slight glint in his eyes as you mentioned that. Do you recognize this? I do. I do. In fact, I hold some interest in um, that particular piece of core. Oh, well, this is the best lead I have had in years. <laughs> he goes into um, like history of fusil cores and all <laughs> sorts of shenanigans and silliness that doesn't really relate to your particular <laughs> situation at that time. Uh, this is all very uh, interesting. I'm afraid oh, I am. Oh, for the more love of a... of a Volvo, what exact? How much will this? Oh, hold? Sigismund will elbow, uh, <laughs> elbow, um, Enzanor in the ribs when he starts mm-hmm. being rude. Yes, I, this I is a fascinating lecture. Thank you. Definitely more of a user of these items than a uh, purveyor of them. Understandable, yes, yes, yes. Um, so what, what is your interest in this particular core or fusil? I confess I do not know much about it. My memories of the item are fuzzy, to say the least. I enjoy... Um the art of exploration and invention. And it just appeals to me. Very well. As he steeples his fingers in a creepy little way. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have any inkling as to where one might search for one of these? Uh, specifically, the Sanguine Touch. I, the only lead I have uncovered so this, thus far is that it may be in or around Darkenhaven or the Republic. Um, at that time, uh, Issa looks around um, and uh, sees that his partner is still in the vicinity and um, waves for you to, uh, for you gentlemen to join him in another room. How about you join me in this other room and we could discuss things further? Absolutely. Very well. Which room would you like us to go to? So basically, um, you guys go on the other side of the books and, and uh, yeah, there we go. And, uh, it, you know, Grindel will go back and start, you know, sorting through one of the shelves. I have learned in my dealings in this area of a um, very ancient fusel um, that is on display in the um, Papa's Gallery um, in the Museum of uh, Gran. It is said to be very, very old. Um, And though they do not know exactly the time in which it's located, as well as the origins of it. it is what I believe you may be seeking. Uh, as I say, that is 
a greater lead than I have encountered in the last years. Uh, perhaps it may be worth visiting. You say it's in a gallery? Is this open to all, or...? Um, yes, I believe. Uh, though, of, of course, you, you wouldn't go during normal business hours. Especially if you're seeking to procure this. I item. understand. However, equally, might it be worth at least uh, checking if it is what I seek? Oh, certainly. I suspect if I see it, it may. Well, I hope that it might assist certainly. some memories. And if need be, I can assist you with, you know, uh, the procurement and transportation of said item um, for a nominal fee, of course. Here we go. <laughs> what sort of fee would you be looking at? Uh, nothing too extravagant, of course. You know, simply the, the standard fee for an importer-exporter. Um, oh, Inzenor, add it to the spreadsheet. <laughs> Which would be? Add this fee to the spreadsheet. <laughs> I would say um, a percentage of its cost or its value to you. It'd be great indeed. Let us perhaps see if it is the item we seek first. Indeed, indeed. Um, I know where that place is, if you want me to lead. I have a friend that works there. That would be good. Sure. Perfect. You're familiar that's... with someone that's inside of the museum. Oh, Seven. yes. Yes, my friend Donnie. Really? Yes. Yeah, I brought her to the house literally dozens of times. You know, Thonia, you should take more of an interest in the people coming to our home. Oh, I take order. more interest in problems that I can solve and less time in spending with individuals such as this over here. And She literally at works at the museum. I've said in the north. She knows about weird like stuff like you like before and you just kind of uh, at us maybe in the future. are you saying that well, yes but you don't listen to me a lot of times but let's just go and i'll introduce you to tony later okay all right fine all right as he's right, uh, so just you, cleaning his nails you you uh are you going with them uh etza um sure all I'll, right i'll join them um, I think that we should take it. Edson knows about getting stuff that's not his. Are you uh, kidding of the place would be useful too. From this is true. <laughs> professionals. It feels like a four-man <laughs> job. So you you uh, you make your way to the Popper's Gallery, and uh, it, and it is open, and there is um, there is an an old dwarven lady uh, who's kind of just wandering around dusting things off um and then you know she 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 sees you uh sigismund and says oh sigismund it, it is nice to to meet you again um what brings you to the pauper's gallery i'll go over and give her like a little hug and be like good morning tony how are you today um, uh, i am good i am good good uh, we are here to actually uh take a look at uh just a few things around and um We've heard some rumors of some interesting artifacts here, and we just want yes. to take a look. <laughs> she she says, "Oh, of course, I take an interest in in our our history." And then she looks over and sees Etza, and Gives some her of a our big wide fake smile. <laughs> Hello, and, and and um, she she gives Etza this this kind of smirk, this knowing smirk. Um, uh, Valenry, give me a wisdom save, please. Valenry, yes, <laughs> yeah, that's you. Oh, that's me. <laughs> You're Valenry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome right. to your new made-up name. <laughs> <laughs> I made this character honest. <laughs> Wisdom save. That is a massive five. All right. Um, yeah, there's 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 something something odd about this this dwarf 
lady. Um, it, it, she gives she gives Etza this this knowing smirk, and and it just it makes you feel weird. Uh, I I don't know an, another way to 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 say it, but nobody else has this feeling. Just 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 Valenry. Um, uh, well, what is it that I can uh, help assist you with? Um, are you here looking for something specific? Um, yes, I think there is an, a new uh, fusel core that is here. My friend here is a fusilier, and he is always interested in seeing. Um, oh, it is good to study these weapons to have a look at how they have been constructed over the years and. I see. Yes. Well, come this way. It, it, I, I think it is. It is called uh, this. And she takes you over, and there's a a fusel that's kind of broken in half, and you can see that the fusel core is still in there. It looks completely inactive. Um, and she says, "This is uh, a a a a fusel that was uh, what's was once known as the the." Uh, Hammer of Light is the name of this fusel, but once we found out that the sanguine touch was inside it, that's what made it even more valuable. Um, so, and then when you hear the 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 words, uh, the Hammer of Light, give me a wisdom save, Valenry. Me again, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, what's that would be 14. 14. Okay. There is something familiar about that name. Uh, like mm -hmm. you, you now you're like, there's something really familiar to you about the hammer of light. Um, otherwise you, and, and mm -hmm. you're starting to just get this weird, uh, almost like a, um, deja vu type deja vu feeling yes exactly yeah. um so and and it is it is what you've been seeking mm -hmm. um so and she goes there's not much else i can tell you about it that's a shame i was about to ask it's not a weapon that i'm familiar with that's a shame would there be anyone that would know more about it um, not anymore. And she looks very sad. I understand. I'm sorry. What's what's wrong, Donia? Is did someone was it someone you knew who passed? Yes, away? yes, somebody very dear to my heart. But let <laughs> let us um. How about this? And she goes walking off, like to show you a uh, a mask. She's like, this mask is very interesting. And she comes over and points to a, a different, like she. You can tell that she just does not want to talk about that yeah. that fusel or or the person that she once knew who might know something about it. My goodness, Tonya, that is a very impressive setting. Look, looking set of keys that you carry on your belt there. Um, yes, yes, I have. Uh, I have many keys to many museums in the God's Ward. I've, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm caretaker of many of of the God's Ward's uh, things here. Ooh, which one? Which one opens this museum? And she, like this one. What, what, why do you ask? Because you know that I've always been fascinated by keys. Uh, the craftsmanship in this one is very impressive gonna make a sort of mental note of what the key looks like all right well enjoy yourselves and and you notice that you're like there's only like only two other people in this whole museum other than her and and you guys um and they are both both the other people are um probably uh scholars of some sort that this this museum is not really frequented by the masses. It's frequented more by scholars and 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 people like that. So, um, whereas the other museums in the God's Ward are, you know, the museums that the highbrow folks go to because there are, you know, big skeletons of of ancient beasts that we haven't seen on the world for a while and things like that. Um. As Sonia is sort of distracted with 
Um, Sigismund, I'm going to attempt to pick the key off her key ring. All right. Now, how big is the key exactly? It's about that big. It's not a very big key. Okay. It's, you know, about two and a half, three inches. Sleight of hand. Sleight of uh, hand. Can I attempt to I aid in distracting her a little yeah, bit more? Go, yeah, if you notice, you notice that this, and that you're kind of setting him up for this anyway, so go ahead and take yeah. advantage. Okay. I'm like, oh yes, that is a oh, very beautiful I like mask. it. Uh, that will be a 19. All right, you are able to uh, to basically slip the key um, off of the, the leather strap, retie the strap, and um, all while she's talking to Sigismund. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll sort of give a just a slight tilt of the head to everyone um, to indicate that we should probably make a move. Okay, well, gotta go. Thanks for everything. Bye, <laughs> um, Goodbye. Um, Goodbye. As we go, um, if anyone is paying attention to me, um, you'd see my eyes go grey rather than blue. Um, and I'm going to attempt to use Grey Mother's amnesia on Tonia. Uh, to make okay. her lose the last ten minutes of their short of her short term memory. All right, let me roll that, and that's a wisdom save, correct? Uh, it is a wisdom, I believe. Yep. Uh, mm. Well, no matter yeah. what kind of save it is, I've got a four on the <laughs> die, which is probably not enough. It's ten plus proficiency bonus. We are level three, aren't we? So yeah, twelve target. All right, so. Um, yeah, so she did not make it, and as you guys walk out and you flash your your gray eyes and and use um, use use the power of the scundrews over her, uh, mm. she what what was I what was I doing? What, I, excuse me, can I can I help you? And she goes to talk to the other people in the in the you know. In the, in the she seems to be getting on in years. She seems rather forgetful. Um, you guys also notice that uh, Itza is creepily caressing the glass of where the fusel is, <laughs> staring at it. <laughs> um, um, and, and then he joins you, of course. All right. So, so then you guys are, uh, I, I suppose, going to go back this evening after after opening hours and, uh, and and go back into the poppers gallery correct yes all right so Mind you have you. a key so that should be easy um you're, you're and the god's ward uh itself is not like patrolled heavily um there are you know paladins of different faiths that might be walking around um but it the god's ward is also open in the evenings because there are many people seeking out different um different temples and different shrines uh, after they've done their hard days of work to, uh, you know, do whatever offerings that they want to do. Um, so it's not, it wouldn't be odd for you guys to be walking around in the evening after the museum. You just have to pick a time to kind of go in. So first off, Lars, tell us about Mr. Mephitic. What, where'd this come from? What do you do? Uh, the brand is fairly recent. Started out doing it as just to uh, keep myself sane uh, during the pandemic. Uh, I'm not sure that worked or not. <laughs> but uh, I uh, started out with how hard it was to ink the numbers, honestly. 
like that. I was just like, yeah, I was just like, I need to make these, I need to make these bigger. And then <laughs> um, you, you were telling me, you were just like, Hey, these, these would be good uh, for my friend, Alan. These are big ass math rocks he makes. <laughs> yeah, big ass math rocks, yeah. Alan, do you have the, the chunks that, that you, you got? Oh, absolutely. Also exactly. reached out to me and said, oh, hey, they, there's these large dice and, you know, they're going to be like Star Wars colored. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And all my friends know they're like, I'm like super blind. I have a disease called uh, keratoconus. So like the everyone's eye is rounded. My cornea is cone shaped. So um, trying to see things is like seeing stuff through like a blurry windshield. And it's, it's horrible. I can't see what, what crap. So every time I'm at the table, I'm looking at my dice like this. I can't see anything. So I was like, what? What does that say? Right. These I rolled and I put the dice tray across the room for me. I could see exactly what the um the number was without a problem. I'm I mean that in the end, I, I want them to look cool, but the my main thing is I want them to be useful. Uh, I've started doing multiple colors uh, inking. Uh, I have one uh, that came out uh, a giant D20 chunk that came out looking like meat, which <laughs> <laughs> There's a certain, let me see, here, here, here it is. So. <laughs> so it's it so like, amazing. So it just looks like beef. And it, like, with, like, fat marbling and everything. How but, long does it take to make a set of dice? Uh, this is after the prototyping, after all the sanding and polishing of the masters, uh, after the molding, which that, can take sometimes that'll take days depending um but once once i uh pour them once i pop them out of the mold uh usually between uh five and eight hours for a set so alan you got any any last questions before we wrap up and then i try to edit this together uh the first thing is how do people get more of these because i definitely need to get some more especially for my group and i need a whole set so <laughs> how do people get more of these um, well, I, I am in the uh, I'm in the process uh, of uh, setting up a, an Etsy shop. Uh, by the time this airs, which I believe is uh, be around Gen Con, uh, I should yep. have uh, should have an Etsy shop up, and I should have multiple chunks, uh, multiple sets, uh, multiple uh, chunky percentiles. Uh, up on that, like I have one called Shrapnel Interrupted. That is the <laughs> first set I would get. <laughs> yeah, I the, want a set of the butcher shop dice. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs>Seeing maps and line of sight with the characters moving is a game changer, literally. The mind-blowing tech that's built into it, not having to use proprietary things, is great because you can have a 3D printer, you can make your own stuff, you can bring your own things to it, and you can still use it with all the stuff you have at home already, but make it even better. I've literally tried something with this with just like a TV flat with my computer plugged in, and it was just like such a hassle hiding the map. You just look at this and it's, it's there. It's very awesome.
and we are back from our break. Uh, we have just pilfered a key um, from Thonia, uh, who who takes care of uh, you know dusting and opening the uh, Popper's Alley. Um, uh, which, which before we get started, um, I, the reason I chose Popper's Alley is because it was a submission by James. So. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your your ideas for Popper's Alley before we jump back into Popper's the, Gallery. So Popper's um, Gallery, sorry, yeah, yeah. So this was one of the um, locations that we created for Godswood, um, and I have to say, you, you almost got a a, a mouth drop <laughs> when you mentioned it. <laughs> um, so it's in Darkenhaven. There are um, museums, particularly over on the sort of the governmental island. Uh, that are quite restrictive as to they're there for the scholars, they're there for the well-to-do of the city to go and see. Um, and the Pauper's Gallery is sort of a, it's almost a, a here you go to the rest of the city to say things that have been on display in the museums for a while or don't have much interest. You know, we're just going to display these over here so that, you know, we can feel like we're doing something good for, for the masses um and give them you know somewhere to go and learn about the history in maybe a slightly curated manner um so not a case of we're only telling you certain things but we're maybe not telling you some things um right. so it's it's sort of it's a either a very low cost or free entry depending on how you want to run it in your own game um for probably not that very well frequented um but you can run it how you want, you know, artifacts that you're looking for, um, clues in artwork, um, you know, wh whatever you want to use it for um, is the intent there. So. All right. Well, yeah. I, 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 as as we get guests on, if I know that they are contributors <laughs> to the world, I'm going to do my very best to yep. put some of their contributions into uh, into our games. So, um, so We've just pilfered a key. What do we do next? Um, it, would it be possible to create some sort of replica? I, I feel bad about taking something of this historical value from, uh, I mean, a museum of all places. At least let's give them something to look at. You, did mean, you mention you were quite an easy. artificer? Oh, yes, it's quite easy to do that. Uh, we'll we in seven or we'll take care of that in seven or add it to the spreadsheet. <laughs> I'm marking this down. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I, I'm sort of gonna hover over while they're sort of making a replica, um, with an intent that sort of I might not necessarily remember what it looks like, um, but there might be things I go that doesn't look right um and obviously after my comment in the porpoise gallery as well i'll mention to these guys that the the name of that weapon it and i'm it going felt, to keep go ahead it, it felt familiar somehow as they're making that that key i'm going to keep putting myself between uh it's a and uh the the key as much as I can. Uh, it's a, so tell me about the latest thing that you've pilfered, and I'm like just trying to like lure him into giving rants on on like fusils and stuff like he was doing earlier. Just trying to get him to go on one of those so that so that in Savanor can can get it done. Oh yes, um, there were these individuals who were seeking to uh, arm a a separatist militia. Um, on the coast of, and he just rants about, yeah. you know, basically <laughs> supplying a guerrilla force. Um. <laughs> sure, absolutely. And what does a guerrilla force mean? Just like kind of that kind <laughs> of <laughs> conversation, just like the whole time in Salvador, just rolling his eyes. He's trying to use presentation to make this key. I can't believe this guy is saying <laughs> this nonsense. <laughs> Especially because, like, he's a, like, Sigismund is a former like high-ranking military commander. He knows all of the things that he's being told. He's just like luring them out. <laughs> nope. 
Which, yeah, it, the funny it, thing a, is, basically just telling people stuff. He doesn't care. He's yeah. already got their money. <laughs> the funniest part of this is that uh, I think episodes three and four are about the rebellion group uh, called the uh, the what is it? The hindrance, right? So <laughs> yeah. spies of the hindrance, I think was last week. So that's interesting. <laughs> sure, I don't know about the hindrance. Who are they again? <laughs> All right, so back on track here. Um, so you, you, in Savinor, you have finished using magic to create a copy of this key. Um, and uh, now you have, you have two keys. I'm going to hand the other key to Sigismund. Okay. I, I trust you with this. Tony. Yes. I will go give this back to Tony. Uh, you guys wait here. And then I'll just walk in and uh, walk up like, I don't know, two or three feet behind Thonia and then just drop it. And uh, oh, Thonia, it's it's so lucky that I happen to be here. Look what you've dropped. And I'll like tap her on the shoulder and, and offer right. it to her. Give, give me a deception roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh 16 all right all right oh uh, how did that slip off my oh thank you very much <laughs> oh it's been so long i haven't seen you in it such has a been long time a long time Tony. and i'm so glad that i got to see you again today um but i am very busy i just came in to look at that cool mask over there um and now i'm going to be on my way but maybe we'll have you over for tea again sometime and we can try to get in Savinor to talk to you again. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I will see you later. Bye. Bye. All right, later that evening, um, unless you guys have something else that you want to do between now and when you uh, break in. <laughs> 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 the only thing I would have mentioned is if if there's any gear that we would would be of use. And Iza would of course uh, assist with uh, arming during us for the for the um, break in at a nominal fee, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody needs to uh, unlearn the uh, nominal word. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, in Savanor, please just don't let don't let him see the key if at all possible. I just I don't trust him and I don't want him to hurt Tony. You know. Um, so let's try to keep him from. Let's try to keep Inza from seeing the key. Uh, I just don't quite trust him. You know. He's a good yeah. guy, but he's a good mean, guy. Do you say good? And his name in the same sentence. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe he's a little shady, but I mean, who isn't, right? A little shady. On the clearest sunny day, he is the largest tree you can possibly find. Listen, in a forest full of trees that is Buggerton of shadiness, he is one of the least shady people here. So maybe we keep him on side a little bit, yeah? Mm. You guys turn around and you see is right behind you. Oh, hello there, it's How are you today? Hello. Yes, it's true. I am quite shady. Yes, but like I said, a lot less shady than most of the people in Bagrat. Exactly. Yes. So I've not just looked him up and down. Highly doubtful, actually. Take pride in your work. If it is not honest work, it is still work that is necessary to somebody. Exactly. Okay, you you made your way into uh, into the the gallery, the Popper's Gallery. Um, and as you make your way in, you've waited till it was closed for a while and she was, you know, as you make your way in, uh, you see a... Um, wait, come on, go down there. There we go. You see another Scundrews, and this is a Scundrews woman who is up on the... Uh, the she, she's just walked in. She has... Um, two big baskets and she sets them down oh uh, are, are they with you she says to um, to Valenry 
Um, they are, yes. Am I oh, saying well, hello to who good, you are? Good. Well, we will be set up in just a few moments. Uh, is is your is it your wife? Um, is she coming soon? Um, and and which of these is the gift? Could or I... or are you having triplets? Oh my! <laughs> um, not entirely certain what's going on. Um, could I sort of call on my knowledge of sort of the Scandrews? Because I, I feel like this is potentially a rebirth ceremony. Yes. Um, to try and figure out sort of which sect of um, Scandrews this might be related to. So, so um, <laughs> he says it's. It, it, at, at present, you don't know which sect it yeah. is, um, but yes, you are correct. Uh, when you say that, when she says the gift, it does mean, yeah, this is probably a rebirth yeah. ceremony. Okay. Um, and she's got baskets of stuff and she starts, she's chatting with you as she mm -hmm. does, like puts uh, salt on the floor and gets the herbs and the al alchemical and narchemical stuff ready. Um, and she's just kind of moving around mm -hmm. and, and doing, I... setting this up. I confess that uh, I am not the one I think that you think I am. We are merely here to um, support the ceremony. Oh, well, are, are the, these others not, not the gift then? And as you say that, or as she says that, um, from behind a full painting, uh, basically the painting moves aside and through a like basic, basically a tunnel that comes up and out of this this painting, are uh, four more women, and they are dragging a halfling who is unconscious. Um, do we recognize who that is? Is this you do halfling? not? You do not. But they don't seem to be having a good time, right? No, they are they are unconscious, being dragged. Uh, in by these other scundrews and that kind of gives you uh, a a clue as to which faction because you don't think that this this it's person voluntary. is voluntary <laughs> this is not the way that you gain a bountiful life you should know this it is far better when they are willing Um, at this point, uh, yeah. Sigismund's hand is fully on his sword. All right. So, and and uh, give me history checks, all of you who don't know about the Scundrews. And this this one comes out as you say that and says, "Well, Malathuk's blessing is a is a blessing regardless." Not if. It is not a voluntary blessing. How would you like it if somebody came and decided that you were due a blessing that would end your life? But our lives are eternal, my friend. By Malathuk, you should know this. Not if they use the uh, appropriate forms of magic. So the one in the back here, she kind of circles around um, and I'm going to give you guys, let me know your history checks first, and then we're probably going to go on a knit. This one down here uh, who circled around is pregnant. Uh, I rolled a 12. 12? Yep. Sorry, what check was that? Again. History. Uh, yeah. History. You don't need I, it because yeah, you already know about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got I'm a, paying attention, honest. Like a 10 total. 10? I got a 23. All right. And Savinor, you know all of this. Uh, and then Etza knows a little bit of this, and Sigismund knows none of this. Um, I know propaganda. <laughs> right. So <laughs> what you know about these Skundrews is that they were a race created uh, by the god Malathuk. But he was not given permission to make his own race of beings. So he basically crafted these uh, gaunt skeletal I mean they're not skeletons they have skin but the skin is very tight their lips are very you know they, they don't really have uh, much meat on them at all it's just kind of like a, a skin tight over skeleton uh, 
vessel for a spirit to enter. And the way that they reproduce is by these ceremonies where they take a spirit from someone else, sometimes voluntary, sometimes not. Uh, in this case, it looks like this halfling um, woman is, is not voluntary. Um, and the, the, uh, do this ritual and put that spirit into the, as, as the birth of a new, um, scundrews comes about. Um, that's, that's what, you know, uh, I, I guess that's a, you would know that they, they have, they are shells of people who spirits you don't know you don't know as much about like how it happens but you figure you're about to find out um and uh yeah sigismund you don't you don't really know anything um at this point and with that um the pregnant woman says they're not supposed to be here and initiative <laughs> oh boy as she pulls a wand from her waist Ooh. Oh, that's. Um, are we supposed to be able to see the map? Oh, did I not hit activate? Yeah, I can't see the map. Uh, uh, did, no, we're on really, the map, it's but dark. it's black. It's yeah. dark. Okay, please hold. I don't know where our settings for this map. Configure. Uh, you've got to set the GM only, I think, right? How about now? Yes. Yes. There we go. Okay. Sorry. So now you know. <laughs> now you can see it. Uh, <laughs> this is the lady that you've been talking to right here yep. that I've moved around. Um, the halfling is here. And there are three other female scundrews uh, holding, you know, carrying her. Um, she's she's starting to stir a little bit, and then this this one down here at the far bottom of the map is the one who is very pregnant and pulled a wand and said, "Not supposed to be here." With that, um, the way we do initiative is we do it the gooey cube way, meaning that we roll every round. I will start counting twenty or better and count down the init track. When it's your turn, just say, "Okay, I've got that." Um, so twenty or better. Anybody better than a twenty? Yeah, twenty one. 21 and Savinor, you go first. Hooray. Uh, and Savinor just looks around. Oh, here we go. And he puts his hands together. Leanne, please hear my request. And then he spreads his hands out, and his white energy flows from him to Sigismund uh, and Volenry. And as he casts Bless. You Much. don't get the bless, Etza. <laughs> as, as expected. As expected. <laughs> get nerd. <laughs> All right. Um, that was uh, 20 or better. Did you also want to move? Mm, I just want to move uh, slightly this way. All right. And then... Um, 19, 18, 17. I got 18. 18, go ahead. Uh, you will unhand her now, and I'll unsheath my sword and pull the shield from my back. Uh, and I look in the mirror, but this time everything seems totally fine in the, the mirror of my shield, and I will charge over here and uh, attack. All right. Uh, 18, 18 plus some amount <laughs> is it, 18 is enough <laughs> okay uh and then we are dealing new character sorry it's going to be 10 points of damage all right so this one staggers back and uh falls to the ground with a with a big cut through them, uh, so I and I'll actually they are not dead; they're bleeding out. But uh, I'll take them off the map anyways for confusion's sake. All right, that was an 18, 17, 16, 15. Uh, sorry, I had eighteen. Oh, 18. Go ahead. 
Um, so first things first, I'm going to glance to uh, Etza and and Savanor, um, and just say keep the pregnant one and the one on the stairs apart. Um, I'm going to move here, pulling out um, my fusel in my dominant hand and a dagger that I don't think anyone had noticed in my other hand. Um, and possibly a little surprisingly, literally just charge straight into close combat, um, slash across with a dagger and come in sort of under the ribs with a shot from the fusel, um, which within the thick uh, means I don't have disadvantage using a flow lock call weapon in melee. Uh, so we'll go for the melee attack first. Ugh. So that was a nine on the dagger. That's a miss. Yep. <laughs> uh, and that will be uh, uh, um, that's more of a dexterous one, isn't it? Let's go with that. Uh, 23. 23 is definitely a hit with a fusil. <laughs> um, da -da -da, sorry. Uh, yep, yeah, so that's if I'm not moving. Cool. So that is d6 plus two. That'll be three points of damage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Piercing. Every little else. <laughs> he, 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 you, you, you shoot a fusel up towards her abdomen. Um, and she says, she screams, my, my baby, and goes to the side. So it kind of glances up uh, her shoulder instead of, of going center mass. Um, yeah. And then that was a, the other 18. Um, so 17, 16, 15, 14. Okay, 14 is the cultist. Um, so she's readied the wand. She's going to point it a little past you. Um, and uh, she says the, the magical command word. And uh, we will see what happens here. She got a wand of wonder? No. <laughs> <laughs> About to find out. <laughs> All right, so starting, um, actually, let me know, Valenry and, and Savanor, how many hit points do you, each of you have? Uh, Valenry has 28. 12. Okay, and Savanor goes to sleep. Hooray. Oh, and no. Valenry <laughs> is unaffected by the rest of those, uh, those that sleep spell. Um, these two dropped a halfling. Um, the one, this one moves up to attack Sigismund. A 16 to hit. No. No, does not hit. I have and a then, 19 AC. <laughs> Woohoo! And then this one just steps to the side, dropping the halfling, and uh, gulps a potion. And then says... To Sigismund, drop your weapon. Uh, wisdom save. Uh, it's going to be a fail. All right. Then you you uh, just been con commanded to drop your weapon. I dropped my weapon. All right. And then the last one, um, seeing the mother in danger, uh, moves to here. And throws a dagger at Valenry. A 19. That will be a hit. Uh, three points. Down to 25. All right. Um, and that is all of them. So that was 14, 13. Uh, who's left? I, I, a, a sleeping person, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you see, uh, it's a uh, shift slight, uh, 
closer and closer to the um, basically where the fusel core was that was on display. Okay, that's actually way up here. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing. So yeah, he's gonna move his 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 maximum distance, keeping everybody within his view, but not getting fully to there. He's still okay. seeing how things are playing out. So, so probably about to here, and that's that's where you can still see most everybody. Yes, and he will be um, waiting to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, initiative again. Um, nobody, nobody took the time to wake up in Savanor. <laughs> <laughs> it was after my turn. There was nothing I could do. Uh, wake up, food right. supply. <laughs> 20, 20 or better. 19, 18, 17, 16, 16, 15, 16. 16. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. Um, I will basically hold my turn to see if any of the cultists head my direction. All right. Um, and if they do, I will take an action. But until then, all right. So you're you're if if somebody threatens comes up on you, you you're, you'll do something about it. All right, um, Sigismund. Uh, picking up my we- weapon is half my movement. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll pick my weapon up and be like, "That was a very good spell. Let me show you one." And I'll attack, and that is with a bless as well. Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen is a hit. Uh, and we'll cast Smite on that. Okay. So that's 10 Radiant and uh, 5 uh, Slashing. All right. And that's the one you, uh, you you hit before, right? Yes. All right. So that one also falls down next to the other one that was just in that place um, uh, bleeding out. And and um, glowing a little bit from the radiant uh, aura that that smote them. Smolted. Um, the 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 halfling begins to wake up. Where am I? Run. Run. Where am I? Oh, oh. And uh, she stands up and is staggering a little bit, but uh, then we'll we'll keep going. Um, that was. 16s, 15s, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 10. 10. 10. All right. Who was the 10? That was Alan? Or, Me. Uh, still sleep. Yeah. Still still <laughs> sleeping. All right. Uh, uh, nine? You can yep. <laughs> you, you can still take your action if you wake up this turn. Um, um, okay. Um, seeing the reaction because so from my last attack it was just a natural across and under but seeing how this country's reacted to her pregnancy um i'm gonna try and be a bit more intelligent with the attacks and target them both at the belly um so the the dagger will still be a dexterous attack uh i will be using intelligence with my fusel this time though okay uh so dagger first that is a 21. That hits. That is seven piercing. Okay. Um, and then fuse a pistol. Ugh. Ten. Ten is a miss. Yep. But the seven to the the seven aimed at the belly has lacerated her belly and she falls to the ground. She's not unconscious, but she is holding on to her belly and, and, mm-hmm. and screaming, uh, my baby, my child. And she's just screaming. And, uh, so you've effectively taken her out of the combat because she's so worried about, yep. um, the, the wound that you just given her. Um, and, uh, that was, that was everyone except for sleeping seven or, um just sorry and I'm... the and and then uh, they are at a three so she's screaming this lady pushes past you um feel free to take an attack of opportunity if you want but she is holding okay. no weapons at this point um 
and she is running to the mother uh, and and is fumbling with her pouches to try and get some kind of healing salve or something, you presume. Um, seeing that she's unarmed, I'm not going to take an attack of opportunity. Um, but I will sort of try and put my hand on her shoulder and just say, you cannot save them now. In the future, um, do it the right way. Um, all right. The now in, initiative again uh, at the bottom of the round. Give me a, a save from all this screaming um, in Savinor because there's somebody screaming about their baby. This this might wake you up. Uh, what kind of save? Uh, wisdom save. Wisdom save. That is a thirteen. A 13, you are awake. Um, you, you may take an action at the bottom of the round. Uh, standing is half your move. Okay, so I'm going to just stand up and kind of get my bearings and look around, and I see that um, the one has moved over here, and I will... Oh, yeah. And um, conjure a glowing kind of greenish black fist and punch her in the stomach with a... Uh, the, the one up at the top or the one uh, administering salve at the bottom? The administering salve at the bottom. Okay. With a chill touch. Okay. That is a... 16 to hit. Okay. Seven points of necrotic damage. Mm, okay. And can't be uh healed any hit points for the till my next turn. Oof. All right. So so that's a touch touch range spell. So you moved up. No, it's a, a hundred and twenty feet range. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, all right. So initiative. All right. Well, we're 20 or better. 20. All right, you are first. 20 as well. Uh, <laughs> Uh, then you'll oh, go, you second. I'll go second. Uh, I'll cast Sanctuary on the um, our halfling friend. All right. Um, and then move into melee with the other. Drop your weapons. All right. It's over. Um, that was a that was 20, 20 other twenty. Um, I will move as close as possible to uh, uh, Sigmund, um, pulling out a dagger to get ready. Okay, so if you're going to use your whole move, you could probably get to about here. Yep, that'll work. Okay. Um, 19? 18. All right, 18. Uh, the, the one that you have on your shoulder says you are wrong there is a way there is a way and she starts chanting um give me a a history check nobody else would know what this chanting is but you might be able to remember this from your time in in shard and gloom uh, history um that'll be a 10 uh I think a 10 would be enough to understand because you are. Yeah. Um, you know that this is not a, uh, this is, you don't know exactly what it is. A higher mm -hmm. role would got you exactly what it is, but you know that this is not a, um, what she is chanting is not a spell. It is a prayer to Malathuk and it is yeah. not dangerous to anyone. Okay. Um, and she's chanting that the other one is, uh, is is screaming about her baby, and the one up at the top um, says to you, "Grovel!" And that same wash of magic comes over to you. Okay, um, give me a, a wisdom save. I failed, so I dropped and, to my knees. And you start groveling. All right. And that was, oh, the other 18. Um, the, 
the sanctuaried halfling reaches into her apron, pulls out a uh, rolling pin, and starts smacking the scundrews. Why? Um, <laughs> this is very like, stupid. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, how dare you? How dare you try to take Cookie Nevermind? And I, you, uh, Cookie is not going to be taken by some likes. Bap, 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 and, uh, and, and smacking the scundrews. All right. That was 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, ten. 8, 10. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to point my fusel into the back of the scundries in front of me. Mm-hmm. Hold down the trigger to start charging a shot. Okay. Um, and at the same time, I'm going to say, save the children. But this ceremony stops now. Find another way to birth them. Um. And there'll be a slight whining coming from the core of the flowstone as it charges up okay. a shot. All right. Um, her her chanting is uh, is is now very fearful. Um, but she she still does she she's she's shaking her head yes, but she's chanting and and afraid. Yeah. Um, and that would I think just leave in seven or left on the init. Yep. Uh, the one that's chanting, I'm going to use that that still glowing greenish black hand to come around and like kind of hit her in the throat. Cut off her air and stop throat. her from talking. Don't punch. And that is a <laughs> that is a 21 to hit. 21 hits. And that is Perfect. One point of necrotic damage. <laughs> she, she, her, 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 chanting, her chanting is is interrupted just for a brief second as like a cold mist comes out of her mouth, and she she chokes a little bit but keeps keeps chanting. All right, and now it's initiative again. I'm actually going to roll a different one for Cookie. Okay. My dash rolls have been on point. All right. Um, Twenty or better. Yep. 23. 23. Go ahead. Um, mm. At this point, she's got her hands up in the air. She's shaking her head. She's yep. scared, to, ch- ch- just trying to, to chant to uh, this prayer to Malathook. Uh, she's terrified. The other lady's screaming. Um, seeing that she seems to be getting the message, um, I'm going to just swing my fusel around. Um, aim at this one up here. Okay. Uh, and let off a shot. Which is the charge All shot right. with advantage. Well, that's not a crit fail. That's good. Um, that will be a 15. 15 hits. Okay. D6. Uh, 10 piercing. Uh, it should the, the fusel, uh, the charged fusel knocks her back against this over here um, with all of the wallops she's been getting from Cookie. Uh, that's enough to, to take this one unconscious as it bounces off of the uh, cabinet holding um, some artifacts and whatnot. And that one goes unconscious. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a 23. Do you want to move as well? Or are you just standing? Um, no, I'm going to return the pistol to the back of this one. Okay. Um, and just call out to everyone to say, wait until she has saved the children. She cannot do the ceremony herself. Um, she, okay, so that was 23, 20s, 19, 18, 17, 16, 17. 17, go ahead. Um, I will. So are we, we're still in combat technically, right? Yeah, you're still in combat technically, although mm-hmm. there is no 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 aggressors at this point. I just wanted okay. to give you guys some kind of turn order. Um, I'd it, like to. It, it's very tense situation. I'd like to walk up to them now to the 
the Scun and Drews that's injured. Can I get there in yes. 30 feet? Um, and then I will uh, lay on hands the, okay. on the, on the Scun and Drews' belly if she'll let me. Okay. And so I'll dump. Give her a heal. Okay. Yeah. I'll dump. Uh, I think I have 10 charges. Um, I'll give her five. All right. Uh, and that was 17, 16, 15, 14. Yep. 14. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I was 16. Oh, 16. Go ahead. Um, just for clarification, uh, the one who was chanting uh, was knocked out, correct? Or is she still chanting? No, she's still chanting. Yep. Okay. The other one was knocked out. The the one that was over by uh, up in the top of the map by Cookie. Okay. Um. Cool. Uh, I will move close to the uh, not right on top, but I'll I'll move within I guess sixty feet of the the one that's chanting. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I will wait. Okay. Um, oh, I'll look at the puppy. <laughs> All right. Um, now is down to 14. Uh, yep. Their turn. 14. She. Oh, go ahead then. I will let you go first. Oh, no, go ahead. Because I'm going to hold my action because he said. No, okay. <laughs> well, she, she finishes her chanting. Uh, with a, the last cry is to it basically of her chant just says please Malathuk and she uh go flumps down unconscious forward um and you see a wisp of something this this weird looking grayish blue aura fly into the belly of the other uh, uh scundrews from the one that just fell unconscious um, and then the other, the other skunk Drews goes into labor. I'll look uh, over. Um, I run that. Does anybody know anything that can help this woman? I have some basic first <clears throat> aid training. Um, I, I am I am proficient in the medical arts, but um have i given have i helped anybody give birth on the battlefield before is this like helping peasants maybe afterwards <laughs> i don't know um, <laughs> this is definitely not in my wheelhouse <laughs> yes i don't think that anyone else has a better shot at this honestly um i'll sort of call over to the halfling i know that uh, well i do not know you and I know that you have no reason to help this lady, but they made the right choice. Do you know anything? You are a woman. I know it is uh, yeah, yeah. not she, the right thing to say, but she, she perhaps you've been through this yourself. I, I have not. I have not, but uh, yeah, maybe I can help. Um, she just kind of walks over and puts her... Um, Rolling pin back into her apron. No, hang on. We might need that. And <laughs> just and, roll uh, it on the belly. Push it out. <laughs> push it out. Push it out. <laughs> well, um, every, I'd like to say while everybody is distracted by the birth taking place, I'm yep. going to start slowly looking around and seeing if there's anything that I um, could um, um, procure. Uh, for later redistribution and selling. Yeah, of course. Like right here, um, there's that mask that she was going to show off. Um, and and you could just, you know, like lean over the table like you're trying to watch what's going on and and grab that mask. It it looks pretty pretty ancient and and a little abysmal uh, or abyssal. Ooh, not abysmal. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah, you're pilfering the mask. Um, as as she gives la- labor uh, and and we'll we'll shortcut this to um, that the that the, the child is born and it it has a, a heartbeat and it is alive um, and uh, y- you can pretty much garner from the fact that they these uh, bodies of Malathuk need a spirit that the other lady the other 
the other cultists, so to speak, gave her her own life for for the child, and it's her spirit in there. Now, um, you know, uh, Valenry, you know that they that even when things go well, even when things go as planned in one of these rituals, sometimes memories are affected. Uh, the person's spirit is affected in some way, and you're you're just you're not sure about this child. It's probably not going to be healthy mentally um, because you, you're, this was a very non-traditional birthing <laughs> ceremony. Yeah. Um, but it, it, at least physically it looks healthy. And the, the, the Skundru's mother uh, thanks Sigismund, you know, thank you for helping me this. Please, what, what now? What, what uh, now? This, go to sleep and I'll cast sleep. <laughs> mm. We'll right. talk about it later. We need some time to talk. Good night. All right. She, she goes night night and uh, Cookie is holding the, the child. What do you guys do now? That was not what I expected. I apologize right. for <laughs> involving you in internal affairs. Actually, this is perfect because we can blame the um, the uh, incident and the missing items on crazed cultists. Why don't you stop I... stealing all of Thonia's stuff? And we why came don't you here stop making thing, quote marks? I am not going to lie. The thought had occurred to me. It still no. looks at Sigmund as if he had said something utterly strange, alien, and foreign to him. This is my friend's place. You leave everything but the thing we are here for. <gasps> yes, yeah, right. there's that so likely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I, I guess you make your way over to where the fusil core is. Yeah. Um, you. Uh, it's basically sitting underneath a, a kind of bowl of glass looking thing you pick up the bowl of glass um and then yes there's there's this broken fusel um that you had this weird feeling about mm -hmm. uh and valen uh, valenry as you reach and to kind of get the the pistol you feel the 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 handle of it and it it feels right it feels true to you um mm -hmm. and then you go unconscious um oh. we, we will talk about that in just a second so he uh grabs grabs the the fusel from the thing and then falls unconscious uh and begins to shake um oh shit i'm learning a lot of new medicine today uh i'll do my best to tend to him. We need to get out of here, uh, if at all possible. Please. Um, oh my, this is not how we do business. Yes, but was this caused by mere science or something magical? Can I do an arcana check on him? Uh, yes. That is a dirty 20. Dirty 20. So what you know about what's going on with him, um, it is not magical. Um, it, it, matter of fact, the, but in your Arcana check, you realize that the thing he is holding um, in some magical way, basically, uh, you know that this thing this fusel, this ancient fusel, is attuned to him, even though he has never actually held it. Mm. That's what you know right now, is that this fusel is actually, this, you know, hammer of light is attuned to him somehow, even though he doesn't, he says he's never, never actually held it. Well, that is quite odd to see right here. I'm... Um... His aura matches this 
one from this fusel core, even though he says he's never used it or come in contact. So I have an idea out of game, but I don't know how good Sigismund would be <laughs> at connecting dots. Um, sorry, I'm being attacked by a small puppy too. Uh, <laughs> perhaps it is best that we we get everyone home, get back to the building and, and, and put all the clues together so that we aren't caught because of all of the shooting and screaming and baby having that went on in the museum. Okay, so you 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 uh, you, you grab you grab Valenry and you you grab the you know he's he's kind of got a a good grip on this this fusel. You can't get it like it's not he's not dropping it and he's kind of shaking. Um, and then you you make your way through the streets of Darkenhaven from the gods God's ward all the way to Boogerton. Um, with this guy and you know people are giving you glances and 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 he's kind of uh, just shaking this. <laughs> and and etza is like falling way back and just like shadowing you guys because he doesn't <laughs> want to be near you as you carry him uh cookie also follows you back to uh the condemned uh home um which i can get us back there activate um and so cookie is there etza is there uh and you you basically get him back lay him on the couch and then he wakes up but we're going to pause there because i want to go back and and explain to valenry what he experienced over this last 20 minutes um, so you grab the fusel core, you fall unconscious, yeah. you enter this dreamlike state, um, and you're holding this fusel, uh, and you're running through a cavern. And as you're running through the cavern, uh, you're, you're holding someone's hand and you're, you're shooting, uh, this, this, this fusel that, um, basically throws these runic hammers of light from it. Um, and, and you look at your hands and they're smaller. And as you're running, you realize you're not running very fast and you look down and your legs are smaller. And then you look as to the person's hand you're holding as you're turning and shooting down the, uh, down the, the cavern. And, uh, there are some Moroccanoids chasing you through the cavern. Um, and you see, you see Thonia. But she's much, much younger. And then you realize that this she's your height and your build. And you realize this must be my past. This must be a previous life uh, where oh, we, we, we lost, we lost him for a second. Oh, no. Uh, so we're you you realize that that Thonia and you start to have memories of that life where you fled the arachnoids and you found yourself in the tunnels um, uh, of the underdelve. And then you came out in a train tunnel that led to Darkenhaven. Um, and then you, 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 you remember you flash forward a little bit. She's, she's tinkering with stuff and she's trying to fix your fusel. And uh, there's something wrong with it. And there's a little shop in Darkenhaven. And she asked you to get something. And then you're, you're going, you went to, you went down into the gloom port to find these things that she needed. These, uh, uh, these different um, tools and spell components and things that a, that a um, artificer might need but you were waylaid and put aboard a ship. And from there you realize you were taken to Chardon Gloom. You were used in a ritual much like you saw tonight and against your will put into the first of your Skundru's bodies. And you've probably had a few since then. Yeah. 
Um, and that must have been 150 years ago, you think. And then you come to and you're on a couch and everyone is around. What, what happened to our, uh, this place? Rest easy. You passed out and we're having some sort of fit. We weren't exactly sure what was going on, so we just brought you home. But all is well. Everyone is safe. Are you the, feeling okay? The rebirth ceremonies, they play havoc with memories. And the oh. returning of those memories is not always pleasant. Oh. You had memories of return? I did. I remember this weapon. Hmm. I remember... I suspect my mother trying to fix it. I see. What do you know of Thonia's past? I'm, I'm going to say that you probably don't think she's your mother. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Ignore the mother bit. <laughs> yeah. let, let me help fill in some of those pieces, Corey. Um, <laughs> I know that there are things that she, she won't speak of when we talk. Um, I know that she lost someone very dear to her um, long ago. Um, the way that she speaks of it makes me think that perhaps it was her lover or her husband. Um, but I am not, I'm not sure of that. But um, she has been here in the city for quite a long time, longer than I have. Um, and I'm not a spring chicken myself. But um, I know that there is a deep wound in her that... Um, does not seem to want to heal. And I know that because I have those as well. So really, other than that, I, I just generally make pleasantries with her and um, try to offer her some company because she seems to be very lonely. But um, that's really all I know. She came from the Gloomport to Darkenhaven, did she not? Hmm. Yes, I, I think she's mentioned some places in the Gloomport. Um, Before that, from the Underdelve, perhaps? I do notice a bit of that accent uh, when she speaks that, yes, that, that, that would track why. We need to speak to her. Um, I do not think we should speak to her at the gallery, however. Do I know where she, a... do yep. I know where she lives? Yeah, well, she has a she has a, a artificer shop actually two doors down from Gideon's <laughs> uh, Grindel's pawn shop. Oh yes, I knew that. Um, yes, uh, what time of the evening? It's 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 a bit late, but if you think it's that important, we could we could go now. She's right down the street. I think it would be. Um, okay. I think she can help a lot. Okay. In seven right. order, are you coming? Yes? Uh, I am coming. I wish to see what exactly is going on here, because you've made mention of the ritual that has things of your memory, but it didn't seem to affect you until you touched this fusel core. And from what I can see, your essence is in sync with the aura of this core. I do not understand it fully myself, but it's, I can sense it. It is strange. Uh, normally I would need to meditate on a few zills before being able to utilize them, but I feel that if it were in one piece, it would work for me. Interesting. You mentioned you had some interest in Muscundrews. Did did we bring that Muscundrews lady and her child with us? Uh, no, you left them there to 
you know, I, I assume you woke her up before you left so that she could care for her child. But my my thought was that you left them there to <laughs> figure themselves out. Yeah. And also like two uh, points are somewhere to help. But did she seem to have any money on her at all, Corey? Uh, no, like, but she had a, a wand of sleep with uh, three charges left on it. No, no, no. What I, what I meant is oh. I'm going I'm going to leave a few gold. Uh, oh, OK. Just a couple, three gold to help them like find lodging or or some food or something stuff that the newborn might need yeah, but it, she did have a wand of sleep with three charges left on it if you wanted to take that so that they didn't waylay other people in sure. um, I, would I would immediately take that because I was a victim <laughs> of that damn wand. <laughs> <laughs> um, that seems fair <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got you guys head to Giddings Way to uh, to meet with um, to meet with Thonia. Um, and she, it is late, but she is still up tinkering with stuff. And she comes to the door and uh, oh, it's just nice to see you again it's for the second time today. Uh, why are you here? And who are all of these people? Um. Well, these are my friends, but very specifically, um, uh, my friend here would like to speak with you. Um, he seems to uh, know about your past, and I thought maybe that you two should speak. Um, I'm somewhat reluctant, almost. Um, it's sort of, I, I know that I need to speak to her and the things that I need to speak of. But there's almost a reluctance that you sort of sense in me to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, and perhaps this would be easier if your mind was partly occupied with your work. Um, and sort of seeing the stage that she's at with something. And with mm-hmm. the memories that I have, I'll just pick up the tool that she needs and pass it to her. Um, she says, thank you. And she starts tinkering with what looks like a hand, uh, a full-size hand. And what you notice over in the corner here are um, the two broken inzendra'as um, that are basically big metal people that are no longer they, they, they are no longer working um, and in those who know anything about the ins and draws um, they need uh, this is ethereum fluid which is very rare to keep them moving and these two have nose ethereum in them uh, so they are basically dead uh, yeah. but she is trying to tinker around and see if see if she can figure out a way to um, at least make their parts work uh, even though their 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 spirit their soul um, is probably parted by now but she's tinkering with the hand and trying to make it work we I spoke to you yesterday at the gallery you may not recall it I did not because... see you at the gallery, and I think I would have remembered someone <laughs> like you. For the purposes that we were there, I needed you to forget. Had I known what I know now, perhaps I would have taken a different course of action. Heart of my stone. Uh, and that will be a phrase that I've remembered from yeah. the vision. Uh, where did you hear that? What? Many times. And then she notices. She notices that you're you're kind of holding the uh, mm. the, the hammer of light. Where did you, did you did you steal that from the museum? And then I did. Why? Why? I... It was necessary my memories have not 
come back to me the same way they sometimes do to our kind. We worked on this together to try and fix this. We well, went, we worked, and, and it like slowly understanding starts to spread across her face. Um, there is no easy way to talk about this. Monduin? Mon, Monduin, is it, is it you? It is not a name I recall, but I know you, Sonia. I know. And as you're you're nervously doing something with your hands, mm. like on the pistol or on the fusel, and and she goes, "It, it is. It it is." And she puts his, her hand on your hand, and and that calmness, her ability to calm you, washes mm. through you like as if you had never been apart um and you're you're kind of flooded with these memories to the point where you stagger a bit of memories of you and her working on things together uh yeah. and 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 so um she she says she she takes the fusel from your hand and she puts it on the counter and she has you come sit in the chair next to her um thank you and uh you guys begin to just kind of talk and as she talks as she tells you tries to help you with your memories you get these memories back and and you you are able to have conversations like as if you've never been parted yeah. um and then after about 10 15 minutes um she says so what do we do now I confess I do not know. It's a give me a D20 roll, please. Certainly. Uh, that'll be a 12. Okay. Um, go ahead, Valenry. What do we do now? I confess, I do not know. I think perhaps the first step is to enlighten our comrades here. Without them, I would not have found what I was looking for, nor would I have found what I didn't know I was looking for. <sighs> Sigismund, um, and Savanar, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I came here looking for this as a weapon that was powerful, uh, that I had some memory of. I did not know I would find my wife. Um, as you say that, as you're, you're talking, you, you motion to the table, you motion to the, to the two of them. And then you finish that sentence and you realize Etza is gone and the pistol that was on the table is also gone. Wait, wait where did the... Yes. Where is it? Perhaps it is, it is making a disappearance, but I believe that maybe it served its purpose for you. <clears throat> Yes. It's brought you something much greater than a mere weapon. And maybe you don't need weapons anymore. Maybe your soul has finally found that peace and stillness and just being with the person what? that you love. What yes? do I remember of the weapon? What's that? What do I remember of the weapon? Sort of um, power level of, of how oh, it's, it would yeah, be? Yeah, the, to... the, the uh, sanguine touch is a, a very powerful core and you remember that that it, it the light's hammer couldn't hold it, basically. Like if you could, it it, it didn't just break because 
it got smashed with a clay claymore or something. Because the power it, it was holding. The power it was holding ended up breaking it, and you guys were trying to make a a new casing, a new mm-hmm. weapon. Um, and you think that you know, should the sanguine touch that that fusel core, that flow stone, be put into the wrong hands, into the into something else that could harness its true power, um, it, would be, it could be very yeah. dangerous. Uh, perhaps, but there is more at stake here. Well, I tell you the, what. The reason my weapon broke the Hammer of Light, it could not contain the power of that core. I see. I tell I you what, in, just... in Sonor, back me up on this. Um, maybe maybe you worry about what you've got going on here, and in Sonor and I and some of our um, associates can, can deal with this sanguine touch. Yes, the first thing we'll do is kill Etza because I told Look, you a long time ago this is going to happen. Look, Etza has to take care of Etza, right? He did not Etza have a spreadsheet. A larger pain in our ass. My spreadsheet <laughs> can't amount to the pain that Etza will cause because he has his future call. Well, then we in will the simply go distance. and get it. You guys hear a laugh. <laughs> I am afraid that I cannot ask you to do that, knowing that I am the reason we are in this situation. Don't worry Sonia, about that. I... We have much to talk about and much to decide uh, for the future, but you know the power of this. You know how dangerous it could be. Yes, I... I need we to... do have much to discuss, but it... It looks like it has been a long day for all of you. Indeed. Quite a long Indeed. day. Let us let, let 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 us return to um to your condemned building and and perhaps we will um we will talk more. And uh you all she locks up her shop. Um she walks with you back to the condemned building you come in and the smell of uh like venison uh cooked pie is is like this this yummy and and you walk in and cookie is like oh i'm, I'm glad you came back i have some some very nice uh stuff that I, I made myself at home in your kitchen and here and she's like starts dishing up um dishing up like different Different meals for for everyone except Etta, and Etta, Etta's uh, will 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 flash over to to uh, Grindel's pawn shop as you walk in. Etta, yep. you start grabbing stuff and throwing it into your bags. Um, Grindel is like, "What are you doing? What? Hey, I'm what? What's what's going on?" Um, I am going to need to take a sabbatical for uh, a foreseeable time. Um, I will correspond with you later on details of the shop and business and whatever. Um, but uh, take care. It'll be fine. Everything's good. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very, very well. Um, very well. And he, he, he just kind of hands you a coin purse and says, that's, that's, your, that's your cut for now. And when you return, we'll talk again. Most excellent. Um, if by chance you see um, those two individuals um, or three individuals I was with the, later on earlier today, um, let them know that um, I enjoyed the company. Um, uh, the endeavor we engaged in was most excellent and um, toodaloo, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Etta heads off to uh, places unknown with uh, a powerful fusel core. Um, the rest of you spend some time in the condemned building eating dinner, and that is where we will wrap up episode five of Plots in Dark and Haven. <laughs> Hooray! All Excellent. right. Awesome. Thank All you very right. much. <laughs> <laughs>